And we're recording. So, hi. I'm Paul Mitchum, as you can see right here. And I'm giving a talk about generators, PHP generators specifically. Um, and the name of this talk comes from a 1987 album by Yes, <laughs> depicted here back when you used to buy LPs. <laughs> so, um, actually, no, it was on CD, I think, but whatever. I tweet at Paul Mitchum, I am mile23, whoops, on drupal.org. And there is a blog post which you can follow along if you are so inclined. See where it, where it takes us. See what I left out. Diff all the diff discrepancies between what I say and what, well, what we got. Anyway, I shouldn't have escaped there. So, Topic zero. I'm just going to give an overview and then I'm going to do like pseudocode typing into an editor to show stuff. So here's the overview. The definitions of a big of a generator, what they are. Um, we're, going to, um, we're going to talk about some remedial PHP to get up to speed so that all this stuff makes sense in context, including arrays, iterators, and anonymous functions. And then we're going to talk about making a generator function um, and just how weird these things are. Um, we'll talk about the yield command, which is like how, how it all works, um, how to return keys from a function along with your value, which is strange. It's all strange. Um, talk about the function references and anonymous generators. Um, and then we'll go up to the AKA high weirdness level two of generators um, involving object orientation of a function, uh, send and throw, which lets you do strange things back and forth between outside code and inside code in generators. And then we'll finish with stupid generator tricks, time allowing. So, uh, and then I'll eventually come back to this to uh, remind me to come back so we can do the overview. But, um, so yeah, the basic thing here is, let's see if this is gonna be big enough. Is that big? Yeah. I usually use net beans for projects, but for coding, just for random typing, coda. Can you see that? I guess you can see that. So um, if a generator function is a function that can be sw slapped right into a for each, or can act like an array, or can act like an iterator, because it is an iterator. Here's a generator function, function generator yield 23. So that is a generated function. What makes it a generated function is that it uses the yield keyword. Um, and that, um, that means, so I can take this function and I can instead of, and I can say for each generator as item echo item. So this means that uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to get an echo of 23. That's the result that will come out of that. Um, and, uh, you know, this is very strange because we're used to um, to uh, functions returning a value as opposed to yielding a value. Uh, yield, in addition to yielding a value, yields the program execution so that it stops at the yield, so it gets the yield, gets to the yield command, which returns the value to the caller and then stops the function in its tracks and then comes back and goes to the next yield on the next iteration. Because it's an iterator, remember. So that's a general basic definition of a, uh, of a generator. Let's talk about where it all comes from. Like arrays, this is an array. Array equals array, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So you can um, access elements of an array randomly. You can't access elements of uh, an iterator or generator um, randomly. You can only go from the beginning to the end. But with the good old array, you can say things like array zero, or, you know, echo array zero and get one. And you can say for each uh, a as Thing, fig, perhaps, echo, fig. And that gives you, you know, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. Uh, so the point here is um, 
Yeah, it's an array. The point is what I haven't typed yet. So <laughs> I can say things like current array. That will give me the where, because there's, there's the index, which is this um, right here. I can access things randomly by their position within the array. But there's also a pointer, and we can manipulate the pointer of an array. So I can say next a, and that will give me the next one after the one I was just at. So let's say uh, up here we got back one. Next will give me two. Simple, hope so, not much time. Um, <laughs> the next item up for bid is the iterator. Uh, the iterator is, a, is an interface that's in PHP. Here, let's look at some documentation. Here's the iterator interface in PHP. Um, it gives us these, um, these uh, methods that we have to implement on an object in order to make it act like an array. So um, we take any class we want to, class, any class, and then we implement, implement iterator. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so now we can say, uh, well, public, because we're good. Public function uh, current. And then we would, you know, return the current thing, right? And we'll have more implementation here because we're good programmers and stuff. And we will, um, so now I can take one of these class objects, I can say, um, you know, I for iterator equals new, any class. And I can say for each, you know, I, well, I, there you go, as whatever. And we get our loop again. We can also say, um, oh, I forgot to start a timer is, I guess, I don't want to go over, so, <laughs> um, so I can say I current, much like with the uh, with calling current and next on an array, same deal here, current, um, the difference, uh, there's one difference in that next doesn't return a value, it only does the advancing, so over here we get a value back from the array if we call next, but on an iterator we don't, we don't get a value back, it only just advances the pointer. Um, so, you can see the similarities between the array and the iterator. The generator, oh, I was going to talk about anonymous functions, but I'm going to blow that off right now. Maybe we'll get back to it. So, a generator, um, we've already seen one, but let's do this. Function generator is, um, you know, for i equals zero. 10 plus plus i. This is an idiom you have seen. Yield i. So for our generator, what's going to happen is that we're going to start on the very first time, we, like what we call current, or when we call next, or any of those value, or those functions, methods rather, values, function, methods, all the same thing. Um, when we call any of those things, um, we're going to advance. Greetings. We're going to advance to the uh, all the way to yield, and then control will zip on back to uh, PHP or to the caller rather, where it will um, um, take that value and put it into the the next thing. So for each generator as item. So what's what will happen here? Echo item. We will, it'll start here, go down to get to yield, stop, put that value into item, and then echo it. Then when we get done with this line down here to this end of scope, it'll go back and access the method again and start right here. Go down and up, oh, we need to go back to four, yield, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, the way that PHP knows that this is a generator, um, which I didn't really cover very well, did I? Is that we're yielding a, a value. You can also have a return in your generator function. So I could say return right here. 
which is a little uh, pointless. But um, if I'm returning a value, you know, return 23, whatever, it'll um, then PHP will, will complain to me and say, um, you're trying to do both of these things. I don't know what to do. Um, but once it's figured out that you have that you only have that you're only yielding values, it will turn it will take this function and it will transform it magically into a generator object generator. So um, if I say so I can say um, my g equals generator. If I say echo get class g, then that will show me generator. Because it's generator object, implements the iterator interface, I can now say things like g current or next or whatever. Which is strange because now we're calling a method on a function. And I have to go back to my little outline because I've lost my own track. Um, so we make it. We made a generator function. We've talked about yield a little bit. Uh, keys. You can return a key value. So I could say um, i times two. Did that work? No. I times two. And you can uh, re use the key assignment uh, operator there to re to return, which is to say yield a two values. So your generator can return two values, which is kind of strange and odd and something to get used to. Um, so I could, um, if we wanted to, we could completely abuse this system and just make a generator that gets called once to return two values. We could, and then call a for each and then return two values and we're done. I don't know why we would, but we could. This is my big problem with some of this kind of programming uh, vernacular, if you will, is that it's uh, kind of breaks a bunch of rules about how certain stuff is supposed to work. And it's going to, I would wager it's going to make a lot of people write a lot of un unpaintainable code. But um, I forgot to mention this is a, a feature, language feature in PHP 5.5. So not a really widespread use at the moment. And um, so, yeah, it's going to I don't know. <laughs> Not a big fan of the generator. Um, so let's talk about this function reference as an anonymous generators thing. So I did right here, I made a reference to my function. Usually when you do that, it's going to evaluate generator and, or evaluate the function and return the value. But in our case, because it's a generator, it's going to return a reference to the generator object. Again, Idiomatic, strange, weird. Um, this means we can now call methods on it, but it also means that I can say, well, let's do a new one. I can also say g equals function without a name yield now 23. So now I've made an anonymous function that, it, that I've turned into an object which is normal, you can do this with your anonymous function anyway, but in our case it's going to be a generator uh, rather than a closure. I can say for each, you know, or I can say, you know, g current. And that will give me, you know, 23. Uh, you have to make it, you have to give it, um, you have to let PHP instantiate the object before so you can't just do like for each um, our anonymous function here. You can't that will that will uh, fail because um, apparently PHP is not smart enough to figure that out. So generators are functions. You can say um, let's do a new one. Function generator. By the way, I'm using the word generator. It can be any function name. Uh, I can pass in a value like foo. Everyone loves foo. Yield uh, foo plus 23. 
Uh, and then I can say for each generator, <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, gener yes, thank you, autocomplete. Um, so I can say, you know, for each generator one as a item and uh, get back 24. Uh, you know, you get it, pseudocode here. Um, so we can pass in anything. We can define it however we want to. We could say, um, like I was talking with uh, Jeremy, Jeremy over here, um, saying we could uh, pass in, you know, super duper container class, and we can have dependency injection if we wanted to. And we can say iterator. So now we can chain them. I can say g equals generator g, except I have to say no here. I'm beginning to get unmaintainable here. Um, but we're going to get really unmaintainable now with the send and throw methods because we can actually pull, we can now tell PHP to shove a value back into the function through the yield command. Let's just do it there. Value equals yield something. G equals generator. G send, you know, 23, whatever. As you can tell, 23, favorite number. Um, so <laughs> what happens here is that I have to put the yield inside these parentheses in order to make sure that the code execution happens in the right order. Um, really, as I say in my blog post that we're supposedly following along with, um, it's really probably for our benefit so that it's documented right there in the code that this is really what's going on because it's very strange. Um, so we're yielding whatever this is. The when we, when we call send, let's assume that we haven't ever called anything on this before. When we call send, um, it will... Why did I do this? So... <laughs> like, hi, hello, I'm confusing you by making a stupid mistake. Um, so, yeah, so what we're doing here is uh, it will... The, when we call send, it will go until it gets to the first yield, will yield a value, and then we'll send this value back to here. So we've sort of wasted a loop, if you will, or wasted a yield. And um, that's, you know, whatever. Um, in uh, the generators exist in other languages, and it's the opposite in other languages. You have to sort of prime the... Um, the yield, the uh, loop before you can then send a value back, if I am correct, I think. Um, so yeah, that's what that is. Um, and you can also make it, if you wanted to, if you're sending values back in order to like send messages to the loop or something, then um, you might have to come up with some code as to like null means something versus 23 means something else. Or you can say, g throw new exception. So I can now send like a little hand grenade. I can send an exception into this spot right here um, where, <laughs> where I can make this function explode from the inside out by throwing an exception into it, which makes it handy for sending messages, obviously, like a terrorist. But um, so I can say function uh, gen, well, I'll quit saying generator. And I can say uh, value equals yield, or I can, oops, 
So try value equals yield. And then I can say catch. What is it? Exception e, right? Exception. Um, do something else, you know, whatever. So now I can just, uh, instead of doing this, I'll say gen. There you go. And I'll throw an exception in and it allows something else to happen besides having to evaluate, doing a switch on the value or whatever, which I guess makes sense in a certain perverse, strange way, because normally you're not used to functions being inside out in this kind of way. Anyway, so um, that's that. I was going to get to some stupid generator tricks. We're at 2 p.m., so I'm at a half hour. I guess I want to be sure and leave enough time. If anyone is completely, utterly confused, ask a question and maybe get it answered, because is there something I left out? You guys relate, so maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Anyone? The thing that I think people would use generators to do um, would be uh, the, the sort of selling point of it is that you want to have, if you want to have like a, a giant index, like you want, like you need to count from one to ten bazillion, then you would have to have, you would use range, which would generate an array that would be huge, and then you would loop through the array just to have some indexes. So in this way, you could make a generator that does stuff like, where was that one to ten here? It's kind of like a lazy loaded. <laughs> a lazy loaded array. That is a good way to put it. Also, you, I mean, if you needed, if you needed to look at every other one of something, you could make a, um, you could have it poke an, a value in, and then, you know, the, the last value in, and then advance one and come back or something. Uh, if you needed to, um, a lot of the examples are for reading files sequentially, um, or for you know, iterating a directory or something, but we already have directory iterators and stuff for that. Um, but basically where you, there's two main points I would guess would be if you want to manage memory in the way I just mentioned, or if you don't want to have a whole iterator, you don't want to implement the entire iterator just to count to 10, right? Um, or, you know, so you don't make a class, put where do I put the, my new class? I put it over here, I have to load it, I have to whatever. Instead, you make a little function or an anonymous function that counts to 10, chunk it in there, and you're done. So, yeah. Um, on the downside, <laughs> you write a function. Uh, it's kind of hard to test, especially if it's anonymous. Um, and it's kind of difficult to sort of define exactly why you're doing it in a lot of different circumstances. So, but, um, yeah. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anyone else? Anything to add about this obscure? Develop module. Yeah. yeah, and Drupal. This is. I'm not talking about Drupal so much as PHP itself. Okay. Yeah, but you can use Devel to generate content for your Drupal site. Um, but this is sort of more uh, very, you know, in language level kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, there you go. I'll uh, show off my stupid generator tricks real quick, which are on this uh, blog post that I wrote. So down here at the end, let's see. Uh, so here, for instance, is a some code. I'll copy paste it to make it big. Here's some code. does something really stupid, which is to use, we're using a, gener it's a digits of pi generator. So it's a generator that mathematically, I don't, there's no math in here. It doesn't work, but um, you can say work on this for five seconds and then yield back and then move to the next computation, the square root of two. I don't know what, but you could, so down here you would say if you get back a digit, then you 
then you echo the digit of pi, uh, or you know, release the time slice to do something else. So, um, as you can see, a lot of uh, you could either either this is genius or horrible. I don't know, um, but there you go. Well, if P, I mean, you can't because it's got a yield. Right, but then you can call send on the digit and tell it it's, and use that to see the still working on it value. I guess. I mean, you could tell it how much time it has. I mean, instead of doing that, you could do you could do it that way too. That'd be another way to stop it. Right. Well, you can't really stop it externally because it's. PHP is non-threaded, right? So. Well, no, you can't because well, like when you're getting values, like you can get a value, get a value, then then the co the callee says, "Oh, I have 100 digits, so generator send false or something." Then you would assign that yield statement to still working on it. So you get your name. I guess I'm not. I don't. <laughs> this is who the code I came with. <laughs> right, yeah. Send and, and throw, I can kind of see, you can like, boom, throw, blow up, but um, send, especially since it wastes that first loop, it's like, what? Why would, why do we do this? There's a couple of, like, uh, the examples of, uh, of reading a file, you can send a, me a message back that says, you know, the file's done or something, or I've reached the maximum buffer length or something. But, you know, whatever. Um, there's a lot of implementations of that already. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. All right, well, I guess uh, that's my talk. I don't know what else to say. Um, if I can get this to stop now, recording. There it is, 27 minutes. So, thanks. All right.